Welcome to Craft with Kathy. We've just started a wonderful sale called Sparkland Savings, 30% off of patriotic transfers and surfaces. And you guessed it, that includes these beautiful wooden stars. Three stars in a set, nine inches, seven inches, and five inches. And I'm going to be using the largest star tonight for this project. Be simple, quick, a nice little piece of holiday decor. And along with the star, I'm going to use a transfer called Oh Come Let Us Adore Him. So let me put the other two aside and get started on this. Being that it is wood, I am going to wax it first. I always wax wood and now chalk suede paper. And the reason you wax the wood is to protect the back of your transfers, which are adhesive. You don't want to lift up any paint or any splinters or anything like that. And by waxing the wood, you actually smooth it and because wood is very porous, so you create a smoother surface to lay the transfer on. And also you put a barrier so that if you have a little mistake or whatever, most likely it's a little bit easier to fix with the wax um, prohibiting the wood from absorbing the pigment of the paste so quickly. After I've applied the wax, I then buff off any excess with my little applicator. And I love using our wax because it has no scent and it comes in a nice two and a half ounce container so it doesn't dry out between uses. Just making sure that I've got everything nice and smooth. You'll feel the difference once you've gotten all the excess wax off. Your little applicator will kind of glide across the wood surface. Anyway, I just thought this was a great um, time to show this project with the stars 30% off. It's a great time to take advantage of the sale. I'll put the link in my description if you'd like to see the supplies that were used for this project. I am going to be using the Oh Come Let Us Adore Him transfer. And if you're not familiar with our transfers, think of them as stencils on steroids. They're made out of vinyl and silk screen and they're adhesive backed. So I'm just going to cut off. There's two extra little images that come with this transfer that I don't need to use on this project. So I'm just going to cut the transfer on the cut lines and remove them before I get started chalking. Now as I am applying it to wood, I need to fuzz my transfer. And fuzzing your transfer is just putting it on some type of fabric to pick up a little bit of lint to diminish the stickiness of the back side or of the adhesive side. If you don't have a fuzzing cloth like I do, you could use a towel or a shirt or a sweater or a pair of jeans. Just anything to deliberately apply a little bit of lint to lessen the stickiness. If I was putting this on glass or mirror or metal, I would fuzz probably eight or ten times because they're non-porous surfaces and the transfer would stick very, very snugly. And we don't want any issues when you try and lift the transfer up. Our transfers are reusable 8 to 12 times or more per project. Now I'm centering the transfer on my star. And in retrospect, I probably should have moved it up about a half an inch or so higher. But that's okay. I just kind of worked around it. Checking to make sure it's straight. I'm going to smooth it out, make sure there aren't any air bubbles underneath the silk screen anywhere. If so, lift it up and just smooth it out to remove them. Okay, I'm going to use my black velvet chalk paste for this project. And our chalk paste is totally different from chalk paint. It is. This is actually a paste specifically formulated to be used on chalkboards where it is erasable. On wood, not so much because the wood absorbs pigment, but on dry erase, glass, metal, our chalk paste is removable. So you can apply it, enjoy it, 
and then weeks or months later, remove it with a spritz of water. Now I'm just applying the chalk paste, spreading it over the silk screen. It'll go through the silk screen to the surface beneath it, and the silk screen gives us this beautiful, crisp image. Quick and simple. I generally like pulling the squeegee that I'm using to spread the paste towards me. So I just turn my project, my surface around a little bit to get at the bottom. Now, if you look closely here, you can see where I make a little mistake and go off my surface. Actually, on both sides, I should have really protected things a little bit by using some placement tape. Look at the peel and reveal. Isn't that a beautiful, clear image? I'm going to try and clean up my little oops with a wet paper towel, but that really doesn't do the trick. on either side. So I'm going to have to try something else. It's out of the way and I have a hot glue gun heating up. Tipsy Tuesday, if you're in vibing, enjoy. I'm still trying to do keto, so I'm drinking my little green tea here. Try this and see if it works. Sometimes if you get a little smudge or whatever where you didn't think it, you wanted it. This is my board eraser. I'm going to actually cut it. Sometimes I cut them in quarters. I use this to clean my board, of course. Also, um, my transfers and magic. Remove little smudges when they occur. So that's one of the tips. You get a little smudge, try removing it. You, can, it's, you want to think of it as kind of like sanding paper, but it's not as rough. So use the little board eraser, which is good for getting, um, if you get any, um, oh, what's the word I want? Ghosting on your surface on your chalkboard from a transfer because the paste has been so long, on so long. Remove the paste with, with water. And then come back with a little, um, if you've got ghosting, come back with a board eraser and it'll remove the ghosting. You'll just have to wet it again and, and do it again. And this probably needs just a little bit more here for me to get the edge off. I just don't want to get too close to my letters because they might still be a little wet. Okay. And of course, if you want, you could always rough this up, use um, sandpaper and distress the edges if you want. Um, or you could put rub and buff on the edges. I think I'm gonna save that for a project though later in the week. So I wrapped a little bit of silver twine around it. My wording is a little bit low. I actually should have had the transfer up about a half an inch or so. And I'm not really sure that I like the way that it looks. I'm gonna place some um, little sprigs of eucalyptus, real eucalyptus leaves, hot glue it onto the star, and then a pine cone or two. Just as a little embellishment, a little accent. Just holding that in place until it cools. And then I have a little red bow that I've made that I also want to add to it. So I'm going to add a little dot of hot glue for the bow. And I think I'm going to remove the silver cording. I don't like it obscuring the letters. So in the spirit of Tipsy Tuesday, here is Tuesday's tip for chalking. Our chalk paste is actually made from chalk. Why it's called chalk paste, right? Total different animal from chalk paint. It is actually chalk paste, and it was specially developed so that you can use it on chalkboard and some other surfaces. Let it sit for a bit, admire it, let it sit for a month or two or whatever you wanna do, 
and then wash it and reuse the surface. That was the idea behind it. And it works great for that purpose. However, because it is made out of chalk, ah, it does need a little bit of TLC every once in a while. No, that's a little bit too much. I need something else, another lead there to kind of hide my glue that I globbed up. So because it is made from chalk, it has a tendency to dry because chalk is dry, right? So you have to take good care of your paste. It's not anything special, but you know what? Put the cap on when you're done using it. I'm notorious for forgetting my cap off and then realizing maybe an hour or two later. I don't think I've ever left a cap off overnight. But it could happen, knowing me. Um, so all you do if your chalk does start getting a little dry, which is not as common, we reformulated our chalk paste about, I don't know, close to two years ago. And um, our creamy dreamy version really is not an issue drying out unless you leave the cover off of it. So all you do if that happens is spritz in a little bit of distilled water because you don't want the pigment of the paste affecting or interacting with any minerals in your water. So use distilled water and mix it up. Now, here's the trick, here's the tip. When you mix your chalk paste, anytime you take something out of your chalk paste, out of the jar to apply to your surface, You'll see me use my, I'm um, just getting rid of hot glue webs. You see me use my squeegee most of the time to dig into the container and pull it out, and that's fine. Never use a popsicle stick. Never use anything that's wood because the wood will absorb the moisture from your paste and wick it up and could speed up the drying of your paste. So instead, you can use one of our little stir sticks. They come like 24 in a pack and they're the, the price is really nominal. So an easy way of protecting your paste. And this is a quick little project for day two of Tipsy Tuesday. What do you think? Yay or nay? I was tempted to go with gold and I think I would like the gold still and I might actually do that. And I think I'm going to add one more little eucalyptus leaf in here. I don't want it overdo, but let me just throw a little dot of hot glue in there and add another one to fill in that little bare space. So not only is this pretty, but because I'm using real eucalyptus, it smells lovely. Just gonna tuck this one in. There we go. But I don't wanna cover up my wording. There we go, perfect. What do you think? Thank you for joining me tonight. I surely do appreciate it. It was quick and easy. And if you are looking for the cinnamon stars, the rustic cinnamon stars, I um, I posted them on Facebook. If you are look, watching on YouTube, just um, comment cinnamon or rustic, and I will send you the link on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching this evening. I surely do appreciate it. You have a wonderful night. I will see you soon.